Got a package here from Chicago Knife Works, which is uh, not in Chicago. Um, let's go ahead and open it up. I think I've got a, a knife and some odds and ends in here. So uh, the odds and ends I might just set aside because it's probably not of particular interest to uh, this audience, but um, we'll go ahead and, and see what we got. Uh, I'm opening this up today with the uh, MKM Asanzo. Yeah, we got some paracord and uh, knife display thing, and I uh, uh, can't remember what this is. Oh, that's a sharpening rod, ceramic rod. And, yeah, but there is one knife in here, and it's from Lion Steel. So let's have a look at that. All right, camera's going to shake for a second as I lower the. Uh, the stand that it's on, because uh, we don't need to be quite that far away. All right, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I um, I own a couple of things that are from Lion Steel, but um, most of the Italian stuff I have is MKM, uh, and Lion Steel is one of the um, members of MKM. It's uh, it's Lion Steel. Um, uh, Mercury knives, Fox knives, and uh, Viper, maybe? Uh, I think those are the four member uh, members of that consortium. Um, I, I do own uh, a Lion Steel Opera, but I bought it used. So I have never actually seen this box before. Um, this line steel packaging, and I also own a uh, Spiderco uh, spy opera, uh, which is a partnership with Line Steel, and it says Line Steel on the blade uh, on one side, and it has the Spiderco logo on the other side. Um, but it came in a Spiderco box, so yeah, this is a new new package for me. Uh, this is the SR11 in red, aluminum, and black. Let's, uh, let's bust it open and have a look. Okay. rub mark there on the uh, on the line of the swedge uh, okay this is sleepner steel um, sleepner steel is an interesting stuff it's um, uh, lion steel uh, says that it's it's basically a um, an improved version of D2 tool steel. It is a tool steel. Um, chemically, it is different from D2, uh, and you can have a look at the chemical compositions if you just want to, if you're a metallurgy nerd, you can Google it and see for yourselves uh, in what ways it differs. But um, it is, I think, even less stain resistant than D2. D2, of course, is, is not a stainless steel. Uh, it is a little stain resistant. Um, but uh, that's why I chose to get one with a uh, black coated blade, um, is because the steel can rust. Um, now this is, one of the interesting things about this knife is that it is an integral handle. So it's one piece of milled aluminum, right? Um, so there's no seam here on the back. There are holes uh, so that you can clean it out. Uh, it is a frame lock with this additional uh, locking mechanism where you can tighten this screw down so that the uh, frame lock can't be disengaged. 
And the idea there is that if you were putting this to very heavy use, you would be even stronger than just a regular frame lock. Um, crown spine. Pretty high grind. Uh, let's see, is that a flat grind? I believe it is a flat grind. Um, deep carry pocket clip mounted at the back. This matte black finish on it that matches the blade. And a glass breaker at the uh, butt of the knife. Pretty good cutout here to access the uh, frame lock if it's not... If the secondary lock is not engaged, this is a little fiddly. So, you know, you wouldn't be using that uh, just if you were just going to make a quick little, quick little cut. Um, yeah. So the idea with Sleepner steel is that it is tougher than D2. Uh, similar edge retention, but more toughness and a little bit less corrosion resistance. Um, so it's intended to be a hard use blade. The flipping action is good. Uh, that the flipper tab does come down and whack me in the thumb as I'm disengaging the lock, which I don't love. That's one issue with frame locks and liner locks with flippers. Sometimes they have that uh, situation going on. Interesting. There's a little texture to it, but it is it is pretty slick. I mean, it's not a very aggressive grip for what is ostensibly a hard-use knife. Let's do some size comparisons. Oh, looks like I lowered my stand a little too much. Um, all right. So uh, just to measure this thing real quick. Looking at an overall length of uh, almost eight and a half inches, blade length of three and three quarter inches, so it's pretty substantial. Um, let's see it compared to a Spyderco Endura, and somewhere I had a Delica on the table a minute ago. Back. I think I had two of them, and now I can't find either one of them. Oh, here we go. Here's a Delica. All right. So there's size comparison with some familiar Spyderco knives. Uh, how about uh, PM2 and a pair of three? PM2 and a pair of three. see is larger than either of those by a pretty pretty fair margin it's in the same ballpark as a PM2 but uh, a little, little bit more substantial uh, how about Ontario wrap model one And rat two, pretty similar to the rat one in overall length and blade length. Not quite as high, uh, you know, across the blade from here to here. But uh, the the rat is full flat grind, whereas this is just high flat grind. Um, and how about? with a Benchmade Griptilian and a bug out. Okay. Bigger than either of those, closer to the Griptilian. Similar handle uh, size to the Griptilian. Um, 
And if we were to compare this with a sort of comparably large knives, we'd be looking at something more like the uh, Manix 2 XL, which is, well, even bigger in the handle. Uh, and the blade, and the uh, Benchmade Adamas. It's actually a pretty fair comparison to the Adamas. Let's, let's see if we can find something closer than this uh, Manix 2. Uh, how about Cold Steel Recon 1? Uh, it's it's not as big as the recon one. Uh, yeah, it's an attractive knife. Um, some of you may be familiar with the um, the knockoff of this thing, Ganzo, right? Uh, which has a bar lock on it, crossbar lock instead of a frame lock, but you know, it's, it's got the glass breaker at the end and it's similar handle shape and similar blade profile. And I think pretty, pretty clearly meant to rip off lion steel. Uh, this is uh, you know, 200 ish dollar knife. And this is like a $25 ish knife. Uh, this is supposedly 440C, which is not bad. Uh, not gonna be as tough as Sleepner's deal. Um, but you know, this is an original design, whereas this is a knockoff. So uh yeah, there we go. It's uh, not gonna be a full review at this point. I just opened the thing, can't give you a full review yet. In fact, takes me a long time to get around to doing full reviews, but I um, thought I'd share the unboxing with y'all and uh, first impressions and some size comparisons. I hope you found that interesting.